Okay. So today I want to introduce you to Sally Robbins, who some of you will recognise as being the head teacher of Farringdon Infant School. Hello, Sally. Hello there. Lo lovely to meet you for the first time, even though it is on, on video. And um, for those that are wondering why there's a bit of a delay between uh, Sally being able to hear me on this video link, so there will be short pauses before she replies to some of my questions. Um, but Sally, can you start first of all by telling us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been at the school here in Farringdon? Absolutely. So um, I, I've had the pleasure of being head teacher here at, at Farringdon Infant School since September 2017. Um, previously, I've worked in schools in Swindon um, and uh, have, have really um, absolutely loved being, having the opportunity to serve this community in Farringdon. Um, it really is a community and it's, a, it's lovely to be part of a school that really sits at the heart of that community and um, has a lovely feel to this community. There, there really is a sense of people uh, supporting one another um, and, and because of where we are and the size of town we are, you know, the infant, junior and, and secondary school being the only schools in the town um, really, you know, makes us, us sit at the heart of that. So I, I'm really um, having really been uh, loving my time in Farringdon. Good. That's good to hear. And uh, I understand that you're a mum with, with young school age children as well? Yes, I've got uh, three children at home. Um, so I've got one child still in primary school and two who are at secondary school. Um, so I, I thoroughly understand the challenges of, of trying to um, home educate our children during this period. Um, my children have, have been remaining at home and, uh, uh, you know, Year six is is fine. I can, I, as a primary teacher, I can manage most of the year six uh, home learning support that that my youngest daughter needs. And um, I have to say, some of my eldest daughter's A level program of study is well beyond me being any help with. Um, but uh, even keeping them motivated is is a challenge. But uh, it, it's certainly testing us all, isn't it? Uh, for sure. I mean, I, I don't have school aged children anymore, but I do have colleagues who do. Um, and I'm hearing a little bit about the challenges that's posing those that are still working and trying to be educators of their children as well. So have you got some, um, uh, perhaps you could chat us through how you're supporting those, those families. I mean, how, how is it all working? So I think, you know, one of the, the key messages that I would want to get across to our families is that we are providing learning opportunities for you to take at home. Um, and obviously those are really beneficial. It's, you know, if, if you're able to keep some learning happening for your children's development, that's really great to keep them in good habits. Um, but I think one of the messages that, that we would put forward and probably always do actually, even outside of this time, is that, that happy, safe, secure secure healthy children uh, comes first um, and that you know there are many challenges involved in trying to get very young children like the learners we have at the infant school to to actually engage with learning at home um, it's very different for them in school you know that the sitting in a class of 30 children with their teacher with the expectation of learning that happens here is very different and we certainly don't want parents or, or children to feel under any pressure about the amount of home learning that they undertake um, the lovely thing about home learning with young children is that actually almost everything you do with those children will be fantastic home learning. So if you decide that actually, you know, the various activities we've linked to online or worksheets that we've um, made available are not working well, baking a cake is, 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 you know, absolutely rich with home learning that can come from it and the science that will happen and the, you know, the maths that you can incorporate into that. Playing in the garden, you know, Know, playing a board game and all the, the counting that can be involved in that the turn taking and sharing and learning opportunities um, you know just going and dressing up you know reading a book and um, we'd certainly remind our families that um, if their children are reluctant to read to them which some children will do with us in school but don't like to do at home um, that reading to your child is equally valuable it gives the the absolute opportunity for them to access a wealth of literature that they probably couldn't read for themselves um, and to have lovely conversations uh, with their parents about uh, you know probably far more interesting story content than they might have read in their home reading books from school 
So I think there is a wealth of ways in which you can um, tailor that home learning to suit the child and how they're coping. Um, what we've done is that each week our staff team are providing a, a bank of activities that relate to the topics and content that would have been taught if the children were in school. Um, so those can be accessed via our school website. We have a, a, a tab of children's uh, page um, and then class pages so that each year group can look at what has been planned for their class, um, their year group for their children um, and access activities that are either downloadable um, or link to an online activity that's particularly useful. Um, we do know that some parents have struggled a little bit with um, being able to print off things for their children to work on. So we're happy for parents to make contact if they would like to come and pick up hard copies of any learning that they would like to do at home um, as well. And um, each of our class teachers has uh, set up an email address for a direct link to the class teacher. Um, so that's enabling parents to contact and communicate directly with the teacher who works with their child. So if they need advice that, that kind of tailors learning to be specific to that, that child and um, their particular needs, you know, whether that, that's a, a question about something that's already set or, or, or a further idea, then they're able to do that um, and teachers are responding to those as well. That sounds like a logistical headache when we first went into lockdown because we weren't given a lot of notice, were we? So how, how did you cope with, with Seth putting all this in place? Uh, it, it certainly has been a challenge. I have to say, um, you know, we, we found out each, you know, each bit of, uh, of this process, we have found out at the same time as the rest of the nation, you know, so we, we only knew that this was going to happen literally as we heard it, uh, you know, at the government's announcement and the rest of the nation knew. Um, so it has required quite a lot of, of acting quite quickly um, to get things in place. And um, we, we obviously had a, a, you know, a brief kind of bit of respite over the Easter holiday where we gave Easter holiday activities, but it's given the teaching staff time to um, explore in more depth some of the learning they can put in place for this term and um, we're lucky that you know many online um, providers have, have given at free home access um, to their websites and you know some of the things that we were used to using in school or that otherwise have paid subscriptions have very generously opened those up and um, so that enabled us to give quite quick links to people and um, particularly from um, you know schemes of work that we use uh, things like phonics play which is a, a wealth of, of super phonics activities for um, parents and children to log on to and maintain their phonic learning which is great um, but but throughout we have found that um, you know actually it, it's been interesting that having very few children in school as we currently have um, sometimes it's been it's been busier than ever really because we're trying to manage the admin of those who are in school and and uh, supporting that alongside trying to provide a curriculum that can take place outside of, of the school as well. I can, I can talk personally too from my own business perspective that it's it's I think a lot more tiring working from home being sat in front of a computer all day long I know some people's roles have them doing that all the time but uh, it's certainly been a different way of working so let's talk for a second about the children who are coming into school so they're children of key workers and perhaps the more vulnerable um, backgrounds so how, how are you coping and how are you stretching their day and what sort of numbers are you seeing um, that's varied quite a lot in terms of numbers. So um, the majority of the children who have been in initially were the children of key workers, um, particularly in the outset, while some of them were establishing, um, you know, perhaps if there are two parents, whether they were both going to be required in work or simultaneously in work. And um, that's actually tailed off a little bit because some people have managed to now have an arrangement whereby one or other parent is able to be at home, or as time has gone on, more and more of us have been asked to work from home and therefore are, are trying to support their children at home alongside working there. Um, so we continue to accommodate uh, a, a, num a smallish number of um, children of key workers and then children who um, are vulnerable either because of a special educational need, so perhaps have an education, health and care plan, or children who have any other vulnerability about their circumstance are also being invited to, to join us in school. Um, the numbers of children we've had have ranged from sort of 15 children to some days only four or five children. 
um, again depending on parents work patterns depending on how well children are coping with that and what the circumstances for their families are um, and then over the Easter holidays we ran here at the infant school we ran a, a sort of central hub for children from all of the schools across the Farringdon Academy. So we had slightly higher numbers then because the children attended from Buckland, Watchfield, Shrivenham, Farringdon Junior School, uh, and obviously some of our own children as well, and John Blandy School. So um, we brought those children together um, and we were supported by staff from across all the schools, but that did mean sometimes we had slightly higher numbers. Uh, this week has been quiet so far. We just, we've had uh, four children in today, so that's been very quiet. Um, and again, it varies slightly depending on the number of children who are in. When we've had sort of 20 children, we've separated them into approximate age groups so that they can be with children of the same sort of age today with just four children in because we're functioning on a skeleton staff those children have remained together uh, despite the fact that their ages range right across our um, uh, age range uh, for the infant school um, we are kind of doing a, a mixture of things really what the government has asked is that we provide childcare for those children so it isn't looking like a normal school day and that's obviously again we're working with whichever staff we're able to have in school whichever people are available and well um, they may not be those children's usual teachers um, we have been blessed with phenomenally lovely weather which has meant that we've been able to make a, a good use of, of our grounds and the children have been able to, to you know get out and about which they may not have done much of at home and be out in the woodlands and be out on the on the playground and on the field um, and then they've done all kinds of other things craft activities reading sharing stories they um, continue to have, have been enjoying the joe wicks PE workouts of a morning i think the staff might be tiring of those but uh, the children seem to, to generally like them i think our legs are, are starting to tire of those anyway but uh, so they've, they've generally come and had a, a, a really enjoyable time of doing nice activities. And, and once again, I think our priority is for them to feel safe and well cared for, welcomed, as opposed to, um, you know, putting too much pressure on them to do any particular uh, learning while they're here. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously a priority is, is to ensure their safety um, and trying to do that by, you know, maintaining what social distancing we can with young children um, but obviously without making anything uncomfortable ensuring that they understand that they must wash their hands and and keep their things safe and so on and are your teaching staff working on a rotation basis as well Yes, exactly. So um, myself and uh, we've kept it that either myself or my deputy head teacher, Mr. Jones, have been in uh, all the time so that we can ensure that there's a point of contact and communication uh, through the office and that we can manage the administration and, and meeting with our vulnerable families, providing free school meal pickups for some of our families. And then the teaching staff have been coming in, um, you know, this week we've got three members of staff coming in um, which is partly numbers are low but partly to support some additional needs um, and then next week there's a different three staff coming in so um, the, the other staff are all busily working at home and they're putting a lot of time and effort into the home learning maintaining communication via email um, and then we're also taking the opportunity for them to do various updates of training while they've got the opportunity to do so. That's a, it's a good opportunity for that, so certainly for my own staff as well. Um, Sally, that's been really useful insight, I think, into how you at the infant school are coping with this change of circumstances. So thank you for your time. Is there anything that the community can do to help and support you at the moment? Um, I think you know we're, we're really grateful to this community because you know there are fantastic things happening within the community the viral kindness group is really superb and you know we're talking on a daily basis to families um who are telling us that they're running very low on money that they perhaps don't have enough food in their cupboards that their their anxiety around going shopping is so high that they don't want to have to do that and so to know that there are great things that happen in this community the food bank that we're able to make you know referrals in and communicate uh, with, with people there, uh, the viral kindness group, um, our own pastoral lead from, from the infant school has been going out and doing some deliveries and we've been uh, you know in a, in a fortunate enough position that we we drop out you know we've been able to drop out food parcels to families if they've really been struggling um, so I think that the community are 
as as they've always proven to, to do they're really pulling together and, and being a hugely supportive community um so you know i just really strongly encourage people to just remember that you know whatever their position wherever they are in this it is hard on everybody um and and to continue to to show you know their support and their kindness which uh, I, I know is an absolute feature of this community because that's that's what everybody most needs at the moment Fantastic. Well, it's great to hear that you as a school can be so supportive too of the families that need it the most. And I guess then the shout out for anybody watching this video is to continue to support the food bank. Um, uh, you know, if, you ca if you can, if you're in a position to drop a few extra items into your basket and then drop them up to the pump house um, to Sally first and, and they can, that can go into the food bank. So Sally, thank you so much. Um, I wish you and your, your team all the best um, through these unusual weeks and, and days and um, look forward to a great big party at the end of it all. Thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you. Thanks. Bye-bye.